Facebook, good morning. Friday morning, hope you are doing well. So, subject of today's video, today's, today's question, actually. So this one, should I change my mind on a trade or should you change your mind on a trade once you're in it? Now, this is a question that I get directly and indirectly all the time. So this is a question that people will message me on Facebook about. This is a question that, that comes up in the trading room and it comes up in very different ways. Now I can give you a kind of blanket answer to this. So one of the blanket answers to this would be, no, you shouldn't change your mind on a trade, but there's more than one side to this. And I think it's really important to, to understand the context of this. So often a question I'll get in my trading room is Ali, what do you think about this market? So somebody will come in or message in the group and say, what do you think about this market? Now, usually that means one of a couple of things. Number one, they're either in that trade and they're either they're unsure about that trade and they want my opinion to potentially make them bolster up how they feel about it. Or secondly, they're thinking about entering that trade. Now, in terms of changing your mind, the context in which I'm talking about here is if you are already in the in the market. Morning Barry, good to see you. So I think this is a really, really important contextual question. So if you're thinking about changing your mind and you're sitting there and you're thinking, right, I'm in the trade, the chances are that the trade will be going against you when you're thinking about that. Very few people think about changing their mind on a trade if their trade is 80% of its way to target. So very often the reason people are asking me should I or the thinking of changing their mind and potentially asking me what I think about that trade the reason is is because the trade is going against them so the first and most important thing is to understand the context of where your trade is so this can turn up very subtly so changing your mind about a trade can mean just getting out of the trade or it could mean something very subtle like moving your stops so I think it's really important for you listening to this if that's something that you know you do is do two things. Number one, make sure you're aware of the context and the frequency of how that happens. So is it happening because your trade is going against you and then in that moment you decide, well, I'm gonna change my mind? Or are you doing it in terms of previous trades? So maybe you've had a couple of trades that have lost and then on the next trade, that trade dips into a negative position and as a result of that trade dipping into a negative position, at that moment, you think to yourself, ah, I'm gonna change my mind on this because the thought of three losing trades is what drives you to change your mind because of the previous two. That might happen more often than if you've had a winning run of three trades and then your fourth trade starts to go against you because you've got in your head the recency bias, the short-term element of the last three trades there. So let's look at it in another way as well. So if you genuinely know that you've made a mistake on your trade, so let's say for example, you've done, a, done some analysis on a particular setup, you've looked at the trade and you've said, right, I'm going in. And then when you review the trade once you're in, you realize that you've actually made a genuine mistake. You've got a level in completely the wrong place or you thought all the criteria for the strategy were met and they're not. If you change your mind in that scenario, I think that's okay. But here's the real difficult bit, is knowing the difference between that and, as I've said, just getting out because the trade is going against you. So this is where journaling and writing down your criteria, having a specific checklist for the strategy you trade is very important. So once you're in the trade and potentially your emotions can be more fluctuating between positive and negative emotions relative to where the trade is going, you've got a checklist that you can actually go through. And this is something we do with our Kickstart students in week three and week four. We make sure the strategies that they trade have a very specific checklist that they can go through. So I think if you've genuinely made a mistake and you've got a checklist that you can reference, then that is an okay reason to get out of the trade because you're in a trade under, for the wrong reasons. But as I've already said, the majority of reasons why people change their mind on a trade and they justify it is because the trade is in a losing position. And the challenge with something like that is if they then look at the market or look at the charts or look at some form of analysis, they'll very often pick something to justify the fact that they've changed their mind. So for instance, they might say something like, 
there's a news announcement coming out or I've heard that they're going to reduce interest rates. A Canadian dollar is going to reduce interest rates. So I'm going to get out of this trade. So people will very often justify their reason for changing their mind with something either fundamental, so fundamental news, or something technical. And what that does is that lets them off the hook about the fact that they've broken their rules. So ultimately, they've used something intellectual, they've used something technical or fundamental to justify the fact that basically the trade is going against them. They're fearful for a numerous number of reasons that we've already talked about, previous losing trades, fear of loss, and as a result, they justify your behavior, justify their behavior. So I think one of the key things in this scenario is if you find yourself doing this, is you have to create an awareness framework. And this is something we talk about in week four of our 28 day kickstart program, is we get the students on our kickstart program to be very aware of their personality styles and the strengths and weaknesses that they have. So for example, if somebody is prone to over trading, a pattern that they might have is they get into a trade, the trade doesn't go the way they want, and then they get out of the trade and get into another trade and get into another trade. So they they have a lot of trades, but they change their mind regularly because essentially what they're doing is waiting for the trade to go in their direction. If it doesn't do that, then they change their mind. Or they flip, they see the trade go the other way, get out of the trade they're in and flip the trade. So maybe they were looking at a long position, price moves in their direction very briefly, goes the other way, before they get stopped out, they change direction and trade the other way. So that's an example of where somebody who's got an over-trading personality will often change their mind in what they're doing. So I think it's important to think about, well, what are the other reasons why people might do this? Well, I think what, I think the number one reason, and in fact, the reason I see the most, is people don't plan their trades out correctly. So what they do is they don't have a specific process for the trades that they take. And very often they'll rush their trades. We had this last night, I was coaching somebody in our trading room. And one of the things they were doing is they were doing their analysis, their overall market analysis of the particular market, and they were doing it too close to the point where they would take the trade. So they were rushing the trade. And then when they took the trade, they, had, they weren't completely sure about that trade. And then as a result of that, they would then be more prone to changing their mind. So they were going into the trade with less certainty. So I think it's very important that you plan the trade. But another thing that I see is a lot of people will not have a specific framework and a specific strategy. So every trade they place is a kind of mix or a kind of cocktail of different technical tools. Sometimes they'll use news, sometimes they won't. So essentially what they're doing is they're looking for a set of reasons to justify an already predetermined belief they have about that market. So the challenge with that is because they're changing their approach every time they trade, there's no way of tracking it and no way of having any data to back that up. And if you don't have a big data set on the strategy that you trade, you're far more likely when that trade goes against you to change what it is you do. So it's very important that you have a framework. If you don't have a framework, that's something you need to focus on. And again, that's something we cover in our Kickstart program, specifically in week one and week two, is get all of the traders there to have a very specific framework. So how do you analyze the market and how do you combine your strategy to, a, to create a framework that can be tested and is repeatable? So I think this is something that I, I well, it's not something I think, this is something I know that I see traders do a lot. And I think this is something traders need to work on a huge amount is making sure that they've got a plan and being very, very self-aware uh, about how they break their rules, how they change their mind, how they get in and out of trades. So there's the odd time where changing your mind on a trade is viable. So let's say you've made a mistake. But most of the time, if you're changing your mind on a trade, then you're essentially in a position where you're acting from a place of fear. So guys, I hope that was useful. If anyone's here and they are watching this and you're not already a member of Trader Support Club, remember you can access free material. We've got some free workshops coming up this month. So if you're not a free member, head to tradersupportclub.com, fill in the little pop-up that comes up and then you'll get straight through to all of our free material. As I've said, free webinars, free private Facebook group and also other training material in there. Those of you that are listening to this that are a free member, if you've not already done our kickstart program in about four to five weeks time. I think it's early, it's about early June, so about six weeks time, we've got our next kickstart program running and that's a 28 day program. 
and actually I'm running this one. So Kerry's having a little bit of time off, but I'm running this one. So really looking forward to working with the guys that are on this. So safe trading. I'll be back in touch with you again very soon.